On this lecture video, I will be discussing the dipole-dipole force, which is the second type of uh, IMF that we have seen already. So first, what is this dipole-dipole force right here? And where do we see molecule having the dipole-dipole IMF? Then the answer, these types of dipole-dipole force exist in all polar molecules. Yes, we have learned how to determine molecular polarity before already, whether a molecule overall is polar or nonpolar. And now, if we were to determine that a molecule is now polar, then we will then see among these different molecules right here, they will be able to form this dipole-dipole force. So again, that's how we we'll be able to recognize this dipole-dipole force exists in all polar molecules. And unlike the dispersion force, which consists of the temporary dipole moment, for a for polar molecule, then they'll be having this permanent net dipole moment right here. And it actually this permanent net dipole moment that are interacting with each other that make up this dipole dipole force right here. Let's take a look at an example to make sure you understand this point. So let's first look at a molecule. In this case right here, the name of this molecule it is formaldehyde. So in this case, we have a carbon oxygen, a double bond, and the carbon hydrogen single bond. So in this case right here, if we were to now remember our molecular polarity, we will then see this molecule right here is e polar. And the reason why is that it consists of a carbon oxygen bond, and this bond right here is e polar covalent. Now there's no dipole moment between the carbon and the hydrogen bond, but only the dipole moment between the carbon and the oxygen bond. In this case, it is pointing to the oxygen atom. And now that will be the net dipole moment because there's no other dipole moment that will cancel it out. So in this case right here, we then see the carbon then become partially positive and the oxygen then become partially negative because of this dipole moment right here. And again, this dipole moment right here is called a permanent dipole moment. It will always be there but it will never go away. And if we were to now look at another molecule of formaldehyde, we see the same thing. This oxygen here is partially negative, and this carbon right here is partially positive. So that's how they would work out. And as also been described here by using this molecular model. And here what happened right here. Anytime we have two dipole moments, the two dipole moments may interact with each other, in which the partial positive end of one dipole moment may interact with the partial negative end of another dipole moment. And this is exactly what the dipole-dipole force is. So we have two dipole moments that are interacting with each other. And so let's now discuss the significance of molecule having this dipole-dipole force right here by looking at some of the data. So here in this case right here, we have formaldehyde. So this molecule that we have seen on the left, that would be this molecule right here. And another example of C3H6. So here in this case right here, this is ethane. And if we were to be comparing their molar mass, uh, for formaldehyde, it is 30.0. And for the ethane, it is 30.1. So we can see that in terms of molar mass, they're quite similar. Because they're quite similar, we would then see they have very similar dispersion force, right? Because this dispersion force is a function of size or mass. So here in this case, they have very similar mass to them. So that tells us that their dispersion force is roughly the same. But now, one molecule, this molecule right here, formaldehyde, it is polar. Versus ethane down below in nonpolar. So therefore, we will then see that formaldehyde will be able to make, in addition to the dispersion force, it can now make the dipole-dipole force. Versus, in the case of ethane, then no dipole-dipole force, but only for this one. And now, let's look at it more melting point and boiling point. If we were to now look at the boiling point, the boiling point of formaldehyde is negative 20, uh, negative 19.5 versus the boiling point of ethane is now negative 88. So you can see here, this is significantly higher than that. And again, please note that we're looking at negative value. The smaller the negative value, the bigger it is. So here in this case, we're looking at a huge difference 
important point between these two substances. And again, the reason why this happened is because formaldehyde, in addition to the dipole-dipole, it can also make the, uh, I'm sorry, in addition to the dispersion force, it can also make the dipole-dipole force as well. So this is why these two molecules, or many molecules of formaldehyde, will be able to interact together very strongly, and therefore have a higher boiling point. And same thing as the melting point as well. So overall, we'll see the following. The larger the net dipole moment of the polar molecule, then the stronger the dipole-dipole attraction will be. And now let's take a look at some of this data right here. So here are some of the selected molecule with very similar molar mass to them. And we actually chose this molecule right here because we want to rule out the size. So here in this case, they have quite similar molar mass to them, meaning that they have very similar dispersion force. And now, all of this molecule right here, ex except for the first one, are polar, right? And now let's look at the size of the net dipole moment. So when it comes down to polar molecule, they have net dipole moment in them. And there's actually a value that we can actually calculate what is the size of the net dipole moment. But then that is not the whole point of this class. However, the size of the net dipole moment is given as follows. So we have this unit right here, D, right here. The higher the value, then that means the larger this, this net dipole moment will be. So we can see here that this molecule down here, this is called uh, acetonitrile. So this one right here have the biggest uh, net dipole moment, meaning this is the most polar. And look what happened in the boiling point. So the boiling point is increasing, and now the boiling point of acetonitrile is the highest because it is the most polar molecule. So again, the bigger, the more polar the molecule, that means it will have a larger net dipole moment. And that will have, and that when they will have a stronger dipole-dipole force, and therefore higher boiling point and melting point. Okay. And now let's try some of the practice examples to make sure that we know how to determine if a molecule has this dipole-dipole force. So first one, CO2. Will CO2 have the dipole-dipole force? Well, in order to answer this question right here, we have to be able to determine whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar, right? If the molecule is polar, then we know we have the dipole-dipole force. So is CO2 polar or nonpolar? To be able to answer this question, we have to go back and draw its Lewis structure. And the Lewis structure of CO2 is as follow. And in this case right here, CO2 actually have two polar covalent bonds. So one here, we're pointing to this oxygen, and the other one here, that's about the same size, pointing in the opposite direction. And now because these two dipole moments right here has the bond angle of 180 degrees, they will cancel each other out. So in the end, there's no net dipole moment. And this molecule is nonpolar. And because it's nonpolar, it will not have the dipole-dipole force. Okay, so that's how you be able to answer that question. And now let's go do another example. Here in this case right here, CH2, Cl2. Will this molecule have the dipole-dipole force? And again, we have to figure out whether this molecule is polar or nonpolar. And that will all start by drawing the Lewis structure of this molecule. So here in this case right here, the Lewis structure of this molecule is as follows. And now to determine its molecular polarity, we have to draw the 3D structure, right? So the electron geometry of the central atom here, the carbon, it is tetrahedral. So we would start by drawing a tetrahedral backbone first. And now put in our central and terminal atom. So we'll put, we put our carbon in here, and we can put a hydrogen right here, another hydrogen right here, and a chlorine here, and a chlorine here. So in this case right here, this molecule right here has two polar covalent bonds, right? So this is a polar covalent bond pointing to the chlorine, and there is another one pointing to this chlorine. 
another bond angle between here between these two dipole moment right here will then be 109.5 degree so will they cancel out and the answer would then be no right so therefore this molecule right here is polar and because it is polar it will then have the dipole dipole force so yes for this one it will have the dipole dipole force versus no for co2 so please try this other two examples to make sure you know how to do this problem.